Off the coast of Central America in the Pacific Ocean, Coast Guardsmen from the Cutter Wash in Alameda, California, the water is self-propelled semi-submersible. From the smuggling, vessels of service members securely captured five alleged drug smugglers and collected more than 5,600 pounds of cocaine. This is the sixth SPSS interdiction by the Coast Guard in fiscal year 2016, which lasted for more than a year. This sets a new record for the service as more than 416,600 hundred pounds of cocaine worth more than 5.6 billion dollars was stopped and captured. If you think war on drugs is only a concern on the land, watch how the military combats drug smugglers and what they use to fight over this rampant crime. Welcome back to another episode of High Technology. Before we dive in, feel free to join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. Without further ado, do here's an inside look of narco subs as a dark and cramped vessel. The term narco submarine is a colloquial collective term for the specially designed boats they use to smuggle drugs, usually cocaine primarily from Colombia along the Pacific coast to Mexico for further supply to the United States or across the Atlantic. Actually, the majority of narco submarines are not real submersibles. They don't entirely meet the requirements for a submarine. However, it's a helpful phrase to know how much of the video someone has watched if they clarify what a genuine submarine is in the comments. We don't realize how frequent narco submarines are. At least a thousand have been constructed. They are primarily constructed in mangrove swamps in the rainforest in what they prefer to as an artisan boat yard. The components are pretty simple. Fiberglass, marine plywood, etc. They construct them, launch them after a brief period of testing, load them with narcotics and usually send them on a one-way trip to Mexico because they are designed for a one-way trip. It is then scuttled at the opposite end. The US Coast Guard Colombian Navy and other troops intercept some of them. Narco subs come in five primary varieties. We identify the first one as LPVIM or Low Profile Vessel Inboard Motor. In fact, this was the predominant form from around 2005 to 2016, although they have been replaced by other sorts, which will be discussed more. They are still present these days. In law enforcement, they are also referred to as SPSS or Self-Propelled Semi-Submersibles. They appear to be rather typical. A single motor in the hull shape that resembles a sailing yacht but without the sails and drop keel have become more or less conventional over time. Initially, there was more variance and some of them had two motors. The forward deck has a hatch where the cocaine enters from the front, although it's not always the case. This is typically how they load and unload the drugs. The crew resides in the middle of the boat, sleeping atop fuel tanks with a single cockpit in the back and that has a raised window. The scuttling valve is one intriguing feature. When the ship arrives, at its location and has been unloaded, these are used to sink it. Contrary to popular opinion, it is uncommon for the narco submarine to scuttle when law enforcement aboards it. It was more common in the beginning. However, it is unlawful to merely be on board one of these ships, whether it is afloat or submerged, and whether or not cocaine is found on board. Consequently, sinking the ship won't get you out of jail, but it does clearly raise the chance of dying, which is why people don't do it. They no longer undertake the equally risky practice of setting fire to a vessel, which is something else they used to do. A new sort of watercraft that was more of a fast boat or a go-fast vessel without outboard motors but was operating semi-submerged first appeared about 2016. The second type is LPVOM, often known as LPGFV or simply Low Profile Vessel Outboard Motors or Low Profile Go-Fast Vessel. Although the designs for this type vary, the cabin is always located towards the back. Every time we peek inside the cabin, it's a disgusting mess. The US Coast Guard has intercepted this one. There's a tunnel inside the submarine that leads ahead to the cargo room, where people sleep and move individual bales backwards and forwards to modify the ship's balance while it is in motion. It's also the primary method of loading and unloading the ship. If necessary, you can also hack the top open because most ships lack a hatch on the top. The cargo space is near the fire and dirt tunnel, and it will be crammed with cocaine. The precise amount can be 3 tons or more, but it normally ranges 
is between one and a half and 1.6 metric tons. The market and the cartel's requirements are more important to the real quantity than the ship's physical capacity. A new variant started to appear soon after we first noticed the boats with the outward motors. From the side, this appears to be fairly identical to the standard one, but when viewed from the top, it is significantly thinner. Its length to width ratio is roughly 10 to 1, and we refer to it as a very thin vessel or VSV, a general name for vessels with this shape. This makes it more stable and efficient when it travels through waves rather than on top of them. Unlike a speedboat which seeks to level over waves, on the interior they resemble non-VSV products quite a bit. The cargo hold, fuel, sidewalls next to the tunnel, cabin, outward motors, and other items are all located in the very back. Although the 75 horsepower two-stroke outward motors are commonly used, there may be exceptions because manufacturers like to use dependable, widely available, and difficult to track equipment. The first three are the ones we encounter most frequently. The rare monsters like LPV IM VSV are far more uncommon but possibly more fascinating. This appears to be a typical low-profile vessel IM at first glance. However, it has an internal motor, and when viewed from the back and facing forward, the exhaust can be seen coming from the back of the same vessel. This concept, which may be the most covert of all of them, effectively combines the internal motor configuration and the VSV hull form. It's quite uncommon because these contrast the two. Actually, each of these vessels has a narrative. The LPV IM VSV is the largest low-profile vessel ever discovered, at least by a lamp, measuring roughly 30 meters, and it was this covered near Spain and has traveled across the Atlantic. People are typically most enthusiastic about the final category. Narco submarines that resemble real submarines have occasionally been seen. These are fully submersible vessels or FSVs. The styles change. Only once have they ever discovered before to launch. No one has ever been detained, indicating that they are far more successful. Although they are less prevalent than low-profile vessels, there are undoubtedly many more of them than we are aware of. They do have certain things in common. The first is the hull, which often has a circular cross-section but ultimately resembles a sausage or tube for the same reason as a traditional submarine. It must be sturdy from every angle in order to support the weight of the water. These were only a few meters underwater, therefore they weren't meant to operate at a depth comparable to a military submarine. But they nevertheless needed to be entirely watertight and constructed like a submarine. The fact that some of them are actually fiberglass is extremely intriguing. A hatch is indicated by the arrow. There are more intricate circular hatches than on low-profile warships since you need a very sturdy, waterproof hatch if you're going to totally submerge. If you encounter one with a square hatch, it doesn't appear to be completely submersible. In order for these tiny wings to allow them to descend and surface again, they also require some form of hydroplane. They will all have them in some capacity, but this particular design had very enormous ones. A very high number of batteries would typically be required because they also require some form of propulsion power source. While some of them do have diesel engines, Engines, they cannot operate when completely immersed. A diesel-powered snorkel sub example that resembles a submarine but isn't really submerged. It needs to always keep the mass above the water since when it is running, it requires its diesel engines and doesn't have enough batteries to operate independently. In this particular situation, the mast also features a camera and navigational aids. Tons of drugs could only get worse for coast guards to discover. In 2014, the crew of the US Coast Guard cutter Edisto brought a seized drug-laden panga boat into the sand Diego Bay. The crew intercepted the Panga 160 miles southwest of San Diego with three suspects and approximately 7,600 pounds of marijuana aboard. Another one was a narco sub discovered in Europe after traveling approximately 4,000 kilometers in a shoddy homemade aircraft. It's comparable to crossing an ocean in a tin can. Imagine yourself there. The narcos ordered the sub to be built in the jungle of Guyana in South America, where it began its journey. The sub was then loaded in Colombia before setting sail. Spanish authorities believe that poor weather caused the sub to seek for calmer waters closer to land after it was unable to transfer its cargo onto a ship off the coast. On Spain's Galician coast, it was discovered by a night vision equipped aircraft. Due to the numerous isolated coves in the sweeping coastline, this region is well known for its smuggling activity. After a crackdown on ports in southern Italy where the mafia held significant influence and control, this region has become a major entry point for Colombian cocaine into Europe. Now, this 70 two-foot submarine was towed to port and examined. Its contents were removed, examined, tested, and its route was tracked. Two cranes were employed to lift it to the parking lot tarmac once it arrived at its new location, drawing the attention of passerby. I can't help but feel that after such a long, arduous, and insane
great voyage, it's somewhat of a sad conclusion for this beast to be left in a parking lot with officers taking pictures with it. It will be there for a while on display as a gorgeous trophy. What weird encounters have you had with narco subs? Have you seen one? Let us know in the comments. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you.